May 6th, 2020, regular meeting of the James City County Planning Commission. Mr. Holt, would you please call the roll? Ms. Null. Here. Ms. Null represents the Stonehouse District. Mr. Rose. Here. Mr. Rose represents the Roberts District. Ms. Leverins. Here. Ms. Leverins is an at-large member and is this year's vice chair. Mr. Polster. Here. Mr. Polster represents the Jamestown District. Mr. Haldeman. Here. Mr. Haldeman represents the Berkeley District. Mr. O'Connor. Yep. <laughs> Mr. O'Connor, are you, you may not be dialed in just yet. Mr. O'Connor, are you there? All right, it's Tim. Uh, okay, Mr. O'Connor is present. Mr. O'Connor is an at-large member. Mr. Krav. Mr. Krav represents the Powhatan District and is this year's this year's chair. I'm Paul Holt, Director of Community Development and Planning for the county. And sitting to my virtual left at a distance far, far away is Mr. Max Halaven, our Deputy County Attorney. Mr. Chairman, we have a quorum. Thank you, Mr. Holt. And before we get into the agenda, uh, as everyone knows, this is a virtual meeting. And I'd like to uh, summarize the resolution that was in everyone's packet today. On April 14th, 2020, the board re adopted the continuity of government ordinance, which under certain circumstances permits the committee to conduct today's meeting by electronic or telephonic means without a quorum physically present of the members. Um, may I have a motion for approval of this resolution? Haldeman moves to approve. Okay. Thank you. And we'll do a voice vote on this approval. Uh, Mr. Holt, if you well, want to roll. A roll call, yes, sir. Um, Mr. Haldeman. Uh, yes. Ms. Leverins. Aye. Ms. Knoll. Aye. Mr. Polster. Aye. Uh, Mr. Rose. Aye. Mr. O'Connor. Aye. Aye. And Mr. Krupp. Aye. Thank you, motion carries. All right, thank you. Uh, first, we get into the public comment section. These are topics that are not subject to a public hearing this evening. Mr. Holt, did you receive any cards or comments from the public for the meeting tonight? Mr. Chairman, we did not receive any for the meeting tonight. Okay, thank you. Uh, we now move to the consent agenda. The consent agenda items are generally deemed to be non-controversial. However, a planning commissioner may pull any item for further discussion. Uh, there are two items on the consent agenda tonight. First is the minutes of the April 1st, 2020 regular meeting. And the second is S-0046-2015 uh, uh, Colonial Heritage Deer Lake um, the state's construction plan. Mr. Ribeiro, do you have anything to, to add before we? I ask if anyone wants to pull a topic? No. All right, any uh, commissioner wishes to uh, pull a topic or can I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? This is Julie, motion to approve the consent agenda. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, thank you all. Our first public hearing tonight is SUP 20-0005, um, 230 Peach Street Tourist Home. Mr. Leininger. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission. Mr. Gary Campbell has applied for a special use permit to allow for the short-term rental of an entire four bedroom home located at 230 Peach Street. This use is considered a tourist home because the owner will live off-site during the time of the rentals. The property is zoned A1, General Agriculture, is designated economic opportunity in the comprehensive plan, and is located outside the PSA. This SEP, if granted, would allow short-term rentals of three of the four bedrooms throughout the year. They can receive approval of the fourth bedroom once the applicant submits approval, approval from the Virginia Department of Health for the fourth bedroom. 
The home is currently occupied by the applicant and would rent the home when they are not there. No changes to the footprint of the home are proposed. <laughs> Staff considered the home's location, parking provisions, and appearance to, fav to be favorable factors in the, in the evaluation of this application. Staff is recommending conditions intended to mitigate the impact of the use and preserve the residential character of the home. Such conditions include restrictions on commercial signage and lighting and future expansions of the use would require an SUP amendment. On May 8, 2018, the Board of Supervisors approved an SUP for the tourist home of the neighboring parcel, 234 Peach Street, and both properties would be managed under the same business. Staff finds the proposal to be compatible with the comprehensive plan, zoning ordinance, and surrounding development, and recommends that the Planning Commission recommend approval of this application subject to the proposed conditions to the Board of Supervisors. I am available for questions at this time, and the applicant is available as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Leininger. I see um, Ms. Leverance has a, a virtual hand up. Uh, Julie, you have a question? Yeah, I do. Um, the applicant said in their letter that the house is three bedrooms, three baths. The staff report says up to five bedrooms, and I'm just wondering what's real. My apologies. Uh, staff report says that four bedrooms. But the so the applicant said that the house has three bedrooms because that's all they're planning on renting. And they notified me prior to the planning commission meeting that there is a fourth bedroom that they would like to <laughs> rent out and the applicants available if they would uh can okay okay well. but they can't but they can't rent the fourth bedroom until the uh state says it's okay that is correct okay thank you Hello? any other questions for staff um no all right um, in that case, I will open the public hearing and uh, ask if the, um, first of all, does the Planning Commission have any disclosures they want to make on meetings with applicants or anything else? Anyone? All right. Um, the applicant is not required to make a, a statement, but uh, the applicant is welcome to if they would like to do so. All right. Hearing no one, uh, Mr. Holt, were there any speaker cards submitted for this uh, case? No, sir, we did not receive any. Okay. In that case, uh, I will close the public hearing and turn to the Planning Commission for discussion or a motion. Ms. Null? Um, yes, I just have a question about um, the owner and who's managing the properties when they're not there. Can the applicant or staff answer that question? Yes, this is Gary Campbell. Oh, hi, Mr. Campbell. Hi, how are you? Fine, oh, thank you. Thanks. For just, just to clarify on the bedrooms, the, the house is currently set up as a three bedroom house. Um, I think prior to the application being finished, my wife had inquired about a, a possible fourth bedroom. Um, at this time, it's not finished. It's, uh, it's, uh, it was for future, future room over the garage, a bonus room. Um, so at this point, it's not even finished. So yes, it is for a three bedroom. We were just inquiring about uh, the, the future use of, of, of a potential fourth bedroom, I guess, if that clarifies that at all. And will, will you or a representative, to answer Ms. Null's question, be available uh, either um, in, in town or nearby to uh, resolve any issues that might come up with the rentals? Yes, my wife and I have the business. We would be managing this property. The property is actually owned by my parents, Armin and Linda Campbell. Okay. All right. Um, Dr. Rose, I see you had a, a question. Yeah, and I guess this goes more to the Planning Commission, but... Because there are conditions associated with this, the, the number of rooms, the number of people per rooms, no simultaneous contracts, how are those conditions enforced if this is approved? Turn to staff for that. Sure. Well, some of the certifications need to be provided to the zoning officer prior to the issuance of uh, to the zoning office in advance of the 
uh, initial business license being issued. For some of the ongoing ones, like number of contracts and those types of things, usually those are resolved in the future upon a complaint basis. So we're not really set up as a staff to do you know, regular, annual, or more frequent checks you know, from here on out into the future for things like that. But in the event that a complaint comes into the office, then by virtue of those being an SUP condition, we would have the ability to enforce those conditions as may be ultimately adopted by the board as part of the resolution. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. O'Connor. I'm sorry, I'll wait till we get out of the public hearing. Thanks. Okay. All right. Well, actually, um, we are out of the public hearing, so you can go ahead. Thanks. Sorry, Ms. Thett. Um, uh, again, as we've been discussing these for the last several months, uh, I remain steadfast in these tourist, these short-term rentals are not in keeping with our, our current comprehensive plan. I feel like uh, as a tourist destination that Williamsburg, James City County is, uh, we always need to put our best foot forward when bringing tourists in and I can't uh, I can't continue to support um, these applications. And in this particular case, it's immediately adjacent to the railroad tracks and in the applicant's letter, it's on an unimproved road. So again, um, I just don't think it's helping us put our best foot forward and isn't supported by our comp plan. Thanks, Mr. O'Connor. Anybody else? All right, in that case, um, can I have a motion on this particular case, SUP-20-0005? Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve SUP-20-0005-230 Peach Street Tourist Home. This is Haldeman. Thank you, Mr. Haldeman. Um, Mr. Holt, would you call the roll? And I'm sorry, one quick question just for clarification for the minutes and for the record. Mr. Haldeman, does your motion include to recommend approval with the conditions as listed in the staff report? It does. Sorry for leaving that out. Okay. No, that's okay. Just wanted to make sure everybody was clear. Um, well, there's a motion to recommend approval with the conditions as listed in the staff report. Ms. Null? No. Mr. Ro Mr. Rose? Aye. Mr. Polster? Aye. Mr. Haldeman? Aye. Mr. O'Connor? No. Ms. Leverins? No. And Mr. Kropp? Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. Okay. Thank you all. Uh, the next case is SUP 20 0007805 Arlington Road, Forest Home. Uh, Mr. Leininger again. Thank you again, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission. <laughs> Mr. Michael Hipple has applied for a special use permit to allow for the short-term rental of an entire three-bedroom home located at 805 Arlington Island Road. This use is considered a tourist home because the owner will live off-site during the time of the rentals. The property is zoned A1 General Agriculture and is designated rural lands in the comprehensive plan and is located outside the PSA. This SUP, if granted, would allow for short-term rentals of two of the three bedrooms throughout the year. They can receive approval of the third bedroom once the applicant submits approval from the Virginia Department of Health for the third bedroom. No changes to the footprint of the home are proposed. Staff consider the home's location, parking provisions, and appearance to be favorable factors in the evaluation of this application. Staff is recommending conditions intended to mitigate the impact of the use and preserve the residential character of the home. Such conditions include restrictions on commercial signage and lighting, and any future expansions of the use would require an SUP amendment. Staff finds the proposal to be compatible with the comprehensive plan, zoning ordinance, and surrounding development, and recommends that the Planning Commission recommend approval of this applica application subject to proposed conditions to the Board of Supervisors. I'd be happy to answer any questions at this time. The applicant is available as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Leninger. Are there any questions for staff? Okay, seeing none, I will... Uh, oh, wait. 
I you used one, Ms. Leverance. C could I confirm where will the owner or the person responsible for maintenance and um, taking care of the place be? Uh, the applicant uh, lives on the property just to the east of of the this site. Okay. So next door. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Anyone else? Are there any disclosures regarding meetings with the applicant or attorneys or anyone related to the case? All right, seeing none, I will open the public hearing and ask if the applicant would care to make a statement. Mr. Hippel? Yes, I would. How y'all doing tonight? This Fine, is thank Michael you. Hippel. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Mr. Chairman and members of the Planning Commission, I'm Michael Hipple, and I live at 821 Arlington Island Road, Lenexa, Virginia, 23089. I'm right next to 805, so I'll be, you know, within a throw, stone's throw of, of the property. Our properties connect. Um, there were some questions on the two-bedroom and three-bedroom. I bought the property with the house as a three-bedroom home. And then once it went to the health department, they had it recorded as a two-bedroom home. I've asked Adam Septic to look into that. He's researched it. The septic tank is large enough for three bedrooms. He's going to check the lines and see if any lines need to be added. And if they are, that will be taken care of. And then that will be resubmitted to the health department in order for the health department to make a determination and they will guide us through that process to, you know, put this back to the three bedroom it originally was. Um, it's, it's set in the woods. I don't have, I have a neighbor on one side and I'm on the other and um, it's hard to see either place through the woods, especially this time of the year. I've got a pier and I'm on mill Creek and it's, um, basically wanted to do this as a tourism home to give people the opportunity to come out and enjoy the rural character of James City County and be able to canoe and fish, um, watch the wildlife, the eagles and egrets and, and everything out here and, and watch the beavers as they swim up and down the creek. So if there's any questions anyone has, I'll be happy to answer those at this time. And I'm speaking as Michael Hipple, a citizen. <laughs> so thank just you. Wanna, just just want to let y'all know. Thank you, Mr. Hipple. Are there any questions for the applicant? Well, it looks like uh, you're getting off easy tonight, sir. No, no questions for the applicant. Uh, Mr. Holt, thank were there you. any? You're welcome. Were there any speaker cards? No, sir. We did not receive any. Okay. Um, based on that, I will close the public hearing and turn to the Planning Commission for discussion or a motion. I see uh, Mr. Polster. Yeah, <clears throat> the, the, you know, these two cases are, and, and the idea of the tourist home Airbnb piece has been a, uh, an issue of discussion over the last two years. And to, to try to, to define what the criteria that we're looking uh, for, to me, has been a real issue uh, about this. I mean, the only thing that we currently have is off of an arterial road, uh, on an arterial road and uh, for. Uh, but when I when I look at, at uh, those tourist homes that are in the rural portions of the county, and we had one, uh, uh, I think, what, last month down at uh, near the York River uh, Park area, um, the, the conditions of the roads and, and those sorts of things to me are kind of immaterial because that's just part of the rural character. And I, I was out to take a look at the peach tree uh, one, and I understand the unimproved road and all the rest of it, but what was really interesting is that whole area that's back there is really very rural, and it's also designated in the economic opportunity zone. And, and so I, I hope that we don't use those sorts of criteria uh, when we come to finally talking about what the criteria should be for these Airbnbs, that we look at where the location is and the ability for people to experience something different when they come to uh, visit here in James City County. And that was it for me. Thanks, Mr. Polster. Ms. Leverance, I see you had a hand up. Yeah, I've, I've 
because we've had so many of these applications, um, what I've done before is look at precedent and um, whether we would be removing um, housing stock from the affordable um, affordable housing market. And I've, I've come to say, and this is a tough one because I can see that this would be an absolutely lovely place for tourists to come and really enjoy what James City County has to offer that, that doesn't include the uh, normal tourist sites. But I'm, I'm getting to where I'm, I'm thinking it's time for us to really take a very hard look at, um, and I think it was Tim that came up with the idea of, of a time limit on these SUPs. And I think for that reason, I'm very reluctantly going to have to oppose this application. Thank you. Anyone else? You know, my feeling, I know this has been uh, a hot topic over the last several years, actually. And until, you know, uh, right now, just using the comprehensive plan and the existing guidelines, that's what I base my vote on and I, I feel this is in compliance with the comprehensive plan and the existing guidelines. I, th I do think the issue of rental of rooms and tourist homes definitely need to be addressed uh, as we work through this new comprehensive plan. But uh, as far as this particular application at this particular time, uh, I will support uh, the application. Any other comments? Uh, Mr. Polster, do you have another one? No, any other commissioners? In that case, uh, look for a motion. Yeah, this is Mr. Polster. I'd like mm -hmm. to make a motion that we approve JCC SUP-20-0007805 Arlington Island Road Tourist Home with the SUP conditions. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Holt? Mr. Holt, would you call the roll? Sorry, it's on mute. Ms. Null? Uh, no. Mr. Rose? Yes. Mr. Polster? Aye. Mr. Haldeman? Aye. Mr. O'Connor? Mr. O'Connor, you might be muted. Not able to hear you. Here we go. Sorry. Uh, no. That's okay. Ms. Leverance? No. And Mr. Kropf? Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. Okay. Thank you all. Next on the agenda is ORD-19-0007, consideration of warehouse storage and distribution uh, centers in the mixed-use zoning district. Hi, Mr. Weisong. How are you this evening? I'm doing well. How are you? Fine, thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good evening to the Commission. At its August 13, 2019 meeting, the Board of Supervisors adopted an initiating resolution directing staff to explore the impacts of amending the zoning ordinance to either remove warehouses, storage, and distribution centers from the mixed-use district or to allow this use as a specially permitted one. Currently, this use is permitted by right within the mixed-use district and has been since the implementation of this district in 1992. As a result, there are several mixed-use developments within the county that have incorporated this use within their design, with self-storage facilities being the most prominent example. Staff finds this use is not one that most fully fulfills the intent of this district, which is to promote multi-use master plan communities characterized by the convenient and harmonious groupings of uses, structures, facilities, open space, and pedestrian walkways and or bicycle paths. However, it is possible that the county could receive a proposal in which this use is appropriately scaled, designed, and fittingly located as one component within a mixed-use development and serve as a support use for other uses that are allowed in the mixed-use district such as light industrial or research and development uses. If this use were to be removed from the district, rather than being reclassified as a special use, such a proposal could not be submitted for consideration. However, if the county were to reclassify this use to being specially permitted, such a proposal could be pursued through the legislative process and examined by the Planning Commission and Board of Supervisors. Furthermore, the expansion of existing facilities could be approved, but only through the same legislative process. 
for those existing mixed-use developments in which warehouse and storage uses are shown on the master plan, this would create an additional public review that would allow the county to consider whether this use is appropriate and put in place the appropriate conditions needed to mitigate negative impacts. Accordingly, staff recommends that this use be reclassified as a special use within the mixed-use district. Staff provided this analysis and recommendation to the policy committee at its November 14th and December 12th meetings in 2019. The policy committee concurred with staff's recommendation and unanimously voted for the ordinance amendment to proceed as drafted to the Planning Commission, which is what you have before you this evening. Staff recommends that the Planning Commission recommend approval of the attached zoning ordinance amendment to the Board of Supervisors. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Wysong. Any questions for staff? All right. In that case, um, the, we won't have any disclosures or uh, an applicant, but I will open the public hearing. Mr. Holt, uh, do you have any speaker cards? No, sir, we did not receive any for this item. All right, I'll close the public hearing and turn to the commission for discussion or a motion. This is Julie. I'd like to move approval of ORD-19-0007, consideration of warehouse storage and distribution centers in the mixed use zoning district. Thank you, Ms. Leverance. Uh, Mr. Holt, would you call the roll? Ms. Null. Yes, A. Aye. <laughs> Mr. Aye. Rose. Aye. Mr. Polster. Aye. Mr. Haldeman. Mr. O'Connor. Aye. Ms. Leverance. Aye. And Mr. Krupp. Aye. Thank you, motion carries. All right, thank you all. Um, the final case for this evening is ORD-20-0003, consideration of amendments to zoning ordinance regarding inoperative motor vehicles and oversized vehicles. Good evening, Ms. Parrish. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the Planning Commission. The proposed zoning ordinance amendments before you this evening are intended to address two issues. One, the keeping of inoperative motor vehicles on residential, commercial, and agricultural zone properties. And two, the keeping of oversized vehicle in residential areas. First, in order to effectively address inoperable vehicles, James City County requested, and in 2019, the General Assembly granted a charter amendment to grant additional authority to James City County to regulate the keeping of inoperative motor vehicles on residential, commercial, and agricultural zone properties, two acres in area or smaller. Currently, the James City County Ordinance regulates inoperable vehicles which are not shielded or screened from view in area zoned residential or commercial. Area zoned A1 general agricultural may have up to five inoperable vehicles. Properties with more than five inoperable vehicles would constitute a vehicle graveyard. An inoperative vehicle, which is not shielded or screened from view, is defined as any motor vehicle which is not in operating condition or for which a period of 60 days or longer has been partially or totally disassembled by the removal of tires and wheels, the engine, or other essential parts required for the operation of the vehicle, or in which there are displayed neither valid license plate nor a valid inspection decal, which means they're missing both items. However, the recent charter amendment permits additional authority to regulate inoperable vehicles for property zone agricultural less than two acres and vehicles which do not display a valid license plate or a valid inspection, meaning missing one. This change will allow staff to effectively address citizen complaints received, which will enhance and protect the visual character of the community. The proposed changes before you this evening regarding inoperative vehicles include the separation of the uh, separate, the, excuse me, separated the inoperative vehicle definition into two subsection and added property zoned for agricultural less than two acres. It redefined language for inoperative motor vehicles to mean any motor vehicle which is in not in operating condition or does not display a valid license plate or does not display any 
inspection decal that is valid for more than 60 days for properties less than two acres in size zone for agricultural, residential, or commercial. It added the definition of shielded or screened from view to mirror state code, and it clarified the civil penalty that it only applies to inoperable vehicles located on property zoned for residential or commercial purposes. It is important to mention that the county does not regulate the keeping of vehicles that are under active restoration, shielded from view, or vehicles bearing antique or farm use license plates issued by the Department of Motor Vehicles. The second part of this amendment um, addresses oversized vehicles in residential areas. So, uh, over the years, staff has received various concerns and complaints with the parking and keeping of oversized vehicles and property zone for residential purposes. Complaints include parking large dump trucks or tractor trailers on property in residential neighborhoods when they are not in use. At this time, the zoning ordinance does not address this issue and has limited ability to address concerns when there are oversized vehicles that is not associated with a business activity on the property. During the July 23, 2019 work session, the Board of Supervisors and the Planning Commission expressed interest in examining and regulating to address this issue. During the review, it was determined that the that an update to the zoning ordinance to address this issue would only apply to private property. Staff discussed concerns with parking oversized vehicle along right of ways in residential areas with the county administration, county attorney's office, and the police department, and it was determined that chapter 13, motor vehicles and traffic was also necessary to review. The following is a summary and the recommendation. Chapter 24 in the zoning ordinance, the proposed regulations include rename and incorporate these regulations into section 24-37, identify certain oversized vehicles that are being regulated, list exceptions to common and expected parking of oversized vehicles in residential areas. It is important to note that staff is not recommending any regulation when an oversized vehicle is located and used on a farm, parked near the location where it is used for work, or parked temporarily for loading, or unloading items. In Chapter 13, the proposed regulation of parking of certain vehicles in the right-of-way is creating this uh, Section 13-36.1 to restrict parking in certain areas. It defines oversized vehicle, and it lists common and expected parking of oversized vehicles along the public right-of-way in residence district. This is important to note also that the proposed amendment will prohibit the parking of certain type of vehicles along residential streets countywide. At the December 12, 2019 meeting, the policy committee reviewed the draft ordinance language and voted three to zero to approve the amendments. Staff recommends that the planning commission recommend approval of the attached ordinance uh, revisions to the Board of Supervisors. At this time, I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Ms. Parrish. Uh, any questions for staff? All right, um, I will then Open the public hearing. Mr. Holt, uh, were there any speaker cards? No, sir, none received. All right, I'll close the public hearing and turn to the commission for discussion or a motion. Don't be shy. Ms. Null and I suggest that we approve this consideration of ORD number 20. Zero, 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 three. Thank you, Ms. Null. Mr. Holt, call the roll. Ms. Null, yes, Ms. Null. I, I just want to be clear that that was a motion, not a... Correct, not for clarification of the minutes, Ms. Null, is, are you, I, I think you, had, you uh, are in agreement that that was in the form of a motion? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. All right, um, uh, I'll restart the roll call vote, Ms. Null. Yes. Mr. Rose. Aye. Mr. Polster. Aye. Mr. Haldeman. Aye. Mr. O'Connor. Ms. Leverance. Aye. And Mr. Crop. Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, we have no planning commission considerations this evening, so it's back to you, Mr. Holt, for the planning director's report. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission. Other than what's been prepared and included as part of your agenda packets, I don't have anything additional to add tonight. Just wanted to take a quick moment to express my thanks and appreciation to um, Alex and Chris Williams, who are sort of behind the scenes as part of the video crew, that have helped to make all of this production um, possible by, by doing this virtual meeting. There are a lot of moving parts. I know um, uh, in terms of getting set for the meeting this evening and the PC working group earlier today, um, both of those individuals and, and a lot of others have spent the better part of a week getting ready for this. And um, my, my thanks and appreciation are extended out to them for making this possible. Good, thank you. And I echo that on behalf of the commission. Thank you uh, very much for the hard work that goes into this. Are there any questions for Mr. Holt at this time? Um, Mr. Chairman, uh, this is Jack Haldeman. Um, we didn't have reports to the commission. Was that by design or? No, it wasn't. That was my omission. So thank you for bringing that up. I'll roll that into the uh, uh, planning commission discussion and requests, if that's all right, um, Mr. Holt and Mr. Halaven. Okay. All right, we'll-, we'll Yep, that's fine. Okay. Yep. All righty. Thank you, Jack, appreciate that. Uh, any other questions for uh, Mr. Um, Holt? All right, we will then roll into planning commission discussions and requests and start with the uh, reports of the commission. Um, Mr. Polster, did you have anything from policy? Uh, no, we're gonna meet uh, this coming uh, next week, I guess. Nothing. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mr. Haldeman, DRC. Hi, yes. The Development Review uh, Committee met on April 22nd at 4.02 p.m. with a quorum present. The meeting was held electronically under the county's continuity of government ordinance. The meeting was called to review a concept for a master plan and proffer amendment to Z0008-2007, the village at Ford's Colony. No action was requested or taken. This plan will now be known as Ford's Bluff. The property is approximately 180 acres and is currently zoned R4 and is designated low density residential by the 2035 comprehensive plan. The applicant was submitted, has submitted a conceptual master plan, land use narrative and brochure. No specific proffer amendments were requested at this meeting. Mr. Rock Bell and Ms. Ali Gorman represented Fry, the developer, and Bruce Hedrick represented Retirement Unlimited, Inc. Alex Baruch, Brett Meadows, De Deirdre Wells, and Katie Pelletier represented the county and Vernon Getty and Jason Grimes attended as advisors to Fry. Mr. Bell made a presentation that covered other properties developed by Fry, the new conceptual master plan, the redesign of roads and alleys, the different home types and styles to be offered, water retention ponds and amenities. They plan to incorporate universal design, indigenous plants, and green building concepts. They have retained consultants to execute various required studies, and they have engaged with the fire department on the width of roads and alleys and a covered entrance. Mr. Hedrick pointed out that the CCRC units had been consolidated into one building from two in the original plan, and that it had been moved to the front of the property to reduce its footprint and to cut traffic through the independent units. And that's the report. Thank you very much. Thanks for any Mr. questions. I'd be happy to try to answer them. Thanks, Mr. Haldeman. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Um, two other uh, administrative items. First of all, uh, the we're on the calendar for a joint Board of Supervisors Planning Commission work session for May 26th. It does not look like that will take place because of the obvious current conditions and also the fact that uh, the county has to um, re revise the budget. So uh, we will probably not be meeting on May 26th and more information will be forthcoming on a, a, a newly scheduled, some potential dates to, to reschedule it. Um, Mr. Holt, did you have anything to add on that? No, more, definitely. I think that's a good summary and uh, more information to follow. So, Okay. Uh, also, Board of Supervisor coverage for May 14th is Mr. Haldeman. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I'll open it to the commission. Any consideration or requests? 
If not, then um, I would like a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Thank you, Ms. Noll. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Opposed? Okay, we're adjourned. Thank you all.